Good evening and welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, October 31st, 2011. I'd ask everyone in attendance to join us in singing our national anthem. National Film Board of Canada for the images of our country and to the, our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio recording. Uh, so we'd start our council meeting with the adoption of the previous council meeting minutes. Could I have a motion to adopt that set of minutes? <coughs> Thank you. Councillor Gustafson. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I'll move the minutes of the City Council meeting held October 17th, 2011. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Did anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Um, anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Okay, uh, Councillor Monroe. Thanks, Mayor Given. I just noticed on page six that there seems to be an error on the uh, first motion on that par page. Uh, it was the motion to amend or motion to be amended to add add an additional charge per child for families of more than three children as determined by the city manager. And I just noted on there that we had Councillor Rice voting for and opposed to that. Mm -hmm. I believe. Uh, <laughs> I believe that it, uh, the four it should have been Councillor Wong. Correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor Wong. Oh, sorry. So Rice was in favor and Wong was opposed. Thank My apologies. No, I, I think I was opposed. But I <laughs> okay. Thanks very much for that catch. Uh, were there any other errors or omissions? then we'll uh, have that motion for the seven minutes, obviously uh, recognizing that uh, correction that'll be made. Any other further discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Doesn't matter, it was defeated in. <laughs> Thank you. And that motion carries. So next I'd look for a motion for the uh, minutes from October 17th City Council Organizational Meeting. Councillor Crokin. Thank you, Given. I move the minutes. Uh, I move that the council approve the minutes of the city council organizational meeting held October seventeenth, uh, twenty eleven, be adopted. Thanks very much, Councillor Croken. Were there any uh, notes on that set of minutes? Any errors or omissions? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. So that would bring us to the adoption of the agenda. We have a motion for the adoption of the agenda. No. Uh, Councillor Wong, you're first in the queue there. Thank you, Mayor Given. I move that Council adopt the agenda as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Uh, any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, and that brings us to the delegation portion of our meeting. This is an opportunity for anybody in the community to come forward and address Council on any community-related matter. Uh, and uh, we have had one uh, group notify us that they wanted to come forward, and that's the We Love the Leisure Centre Aquatic Advocacy Group. That's a mouthful. But come on forward and join us. And when you uh, take a seat, uh, make sure to 
let the uh, let council and our uh, uh, our recording uh, folks know your name. But please join us and have a seat. Hello, Mayor Given and councillors. Uh, my name is Christiana Grimelt, and this is Mark Street. We're both members of the advocacy group. We love the Le Leisure Centre. It's a bit of a mouthful. And uh, really honoured to be able to speak with you today. Um, I myself am an athlete, and so I'll speak uh, more from the, the perspective of someone who values the facility that way. Um, Mark is also an athlete and a business person and a father in the Avondale area. So if you have questions afterwards, uh, we would be happy to answer them from our perspectives. Our group believes the Leisure Centre is an integral part of our fast-growing city and that the costs to upgrade and run it are very reasonable. It is affordable, local, and an essential health and wellness option for everyone in the Avondale and downtown areas. I have encouraged residents to write into council, spoken to a lot of residents, and attended a recent farmer's market to raise awareness around this issue. I've also had the privilege to speak with councillors Wong and O'Toole and hear about their innovative ideas. Our group believes the centre's location to be key. The centre is within walking distance from several major schools, Grand Prairie Regional College, our planned new hospital, and many residential neighbourhoods home to seniors, families, and other people of all socioeconomic levels. The costs to renovate the facility are affordable. The new Aquatics and Wellness Multiplex cost about $109 million to complete. Proposed upgrades to the Leisure Centre are projected at about $5.8 million. Both are key as our city grows. We've also provided some examples of several cities in Alberta uh, that further illustrate the need to keep and maintain the facility. Red Deer is our key example. Uh, I believe that with a population of over 90,000, it's not that much larger than Grand Prairie. And what's more, our city is also an urban hub in the north, whereas Red Deer is surrounded by communities with many services. Red Deer has four aquatic centers. The Recreation Center was reopened in 2007 after major renovations. And that facility became accredited and has both a 25 meter indoor and 50 meter outdoor pool. Uh, other facilities include the GH Daw Community Center, which was also reopened in 2010 after extensive renovations. And Red Deer also has the Michener Center 25 meter pool, as well as the Collicut Center, which I understand is a brand new facility with a wave pool and many different fitness amenities that I'm not mentioning. Uh, Fort McMurray is an example of regional cooperation and the need to plan ahead in northern Alberta. So they have fewer facilities. Um, they're found within the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo. I'm sure you know how that agreement works. Um, the city has a 50 meter pool and a 25 meter pool. Uh, but the municipal spokesperson uh, did tell me that a third one is being planned within five years and that the facilities are greatly needed, not only the aquatic centre but other facilities of that kind. And as an example of the long-term future, Edmonton has 14 indoor aquatic centres um, that doesn't speak to necessarily community centre gyms or outdoor centres, and uh, many of them are older facilities. The Bonnie Dune Centre came to my mind. It was the pool I took lessons from as a child, and I feel it's a wonderful testament to the community's history. I've heard from many residents and believe myself that the Leisure Centre provides a great sense of community in our city. Our group found an important nationwide American study at Pennsylvania University that shows a clear connection between neighborhood recreation options and a sense of community. Benefits include giving kids and all people a place to go, providing exercise, fitness, and a way to feel good. And the study also found that usage of these facilities continues throughout a person's life cycle, and people say they are worth the costs. So I believe that's really relevant to Grand Prairie. Uh, when people move here for work, we want them to stay, and we want them to help to make the city healthy and safe. According to the Vital Signs Survey, which, of which you're all aware, a high percentage of our population is overweight. It's another example of why we need to provide people with easy, affordable recreation. 
And we do recognize there are challenges around keeping the center open. Uh, public education is necessary to show residents how the tax dollars are being well used in funding the centers. I would also suggest that maintaining the center provides a great opportunity to enhance the good work you're already doing to share costs with our county. It's a regional facility and we can all agree that our residents need this now and as our city continues to grow. It will be necessary to hire and train new staff. Uh, however, I lifeguarded as a teen and I know it to be a well-paid job and in a healthy environment. Um, it's a great opportunity that we can give to more teens and, and other people looking for that kind of position. Two centres also provide opportunity to expand our already successful swimming teams. Uh, we have competitive teams, very popular children's programs and adult programs. Our young, young people are competing at very high levels, have the potential to swim for university teams and can make our city proud. <coughs> In conclusion, on behalf of the group, I thank you and we urge you to see how the benefits far outweigh the costs. We believe the Leisure Centre is close to so many important parts of Grand Prairie. It's affordable, it's crucial to the health of the residents of all socioeconomic levels, and it's right in the heart of our city. So we ask that you keep it running for many years to come. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much for your presentation. You're uh, welcome. There may be some questions from council members, and so mm -hmm. we'll ask for a round of questions if you're open to that. Absolutely. Sure. Um, and just uh, before I do go into questions, also note that uh, the Leisure Centre and some information about it is on our Community Development Committee meeting tomorrow. Uh, and so uh, there's actually a report that's on the city's website already uh, that you can read where administration has some uh, recommendations for council in regards to operational funding and capital funding. So that report is on the city's website. You can read it and, and uh, we will be talking about it tomorrow and that meeting's at 2 p.m. here at City Hall. So uh, round of questions or open for questions, Councillor Rice? Was it your intent uh, or have you thought of going to county councilor, council and in, in doing a presentation and encouraging them to attempt to enter into a partnership with the city to keep the center open? Um, thank you, Councillor Rice. I have heard that suggestion um, from other residents and I do think it's a great idea. I would certainly do it. Uh, initially, I was focused on the city but I do understand through learning that the county plays a big role in this. And, and I did believe um, the example of Fort McMurray of the Regional Municipality of Wood Buffalo shows how working together can help. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so some further questions, Councillor Gustafson. <clears throat> Thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, appreciate you coming here. And we've had lots of emails about the Leisure Centre and it's really good to see some people show up and take an incentive. Yeah, so um, how, how long have you guys been operating this group? The advocacy group's been running for a couple of months now. This is the first I've heard of it, so I'm... Um, and how, how, many, how many in your group? Uh, well, the group itself uh, online has about 44 members, yeah. And so, so those are people who, you know, have, have joined our group. We have a Facebook page. And uh, I don't know how many of them have written letters, et cetera, uh, but I do know that with those, I've the people I've discussed uh, sh the issue with uh, share a lot of these views. Okay, and have you guys toured the new multiplex? I haven't had a chance to go inside. I have seen photos of it. Um, it's beautiful and uh, definitely believe it's gonna be a huge asset to the city. And I, I recognize the, the magnitude of it too. Uh, I just I do believe that the city is growing so much that we can definitely accommodate two facilities and that the neighborhood piece is really important. I think the Leisure Center provides a lot to that neighborhood. Thank you. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Councillor Wong. Thank you very much, Mayor Gibbon. How important do you see the pool uh, being as part of the Leisure Center? Because obviously a leisure center could be could have anything in it mm -hmm. for recreation, but how important is the pool component? Um, I I think it's it's very important. That's obviously the, the part that I am personally passionate about. I can't speak for all of our members, uh, but I do. I think it's it's a wonderful. I mean, swimming is great, and and as I said, the programs that we have in this city are really great. And I don't think. Everyone's aware of how good they are, how popular they are, especially the children's programs. 
uh, in particular to the Leisure Center, I've heard this from a lot of residents, is has the potential to be good for little kids because it's it's pretty shallow and the water's warm. And obviously it's a smaller facility so it might be less intimidating for families. Um, it might also be better for seniors who want a quieter environment. So I think the swimming pool itself is really important in that way. I think the other facilities are really important too, the fitness center. I uh, lived in Vancouver for a long, long time and they have a really great community center concept where they've gyms in every in every little neighborhood and I think the Leisure Center could be like that. Okay. If, if I can share too, I, sure. I, I would echo that. The swimming pool is probably of utmost importance. Mm -hmm. it, it's, the, it's the least likely, I would say that there would be, uh, um, that the public sector or the private sector would get in. So it's very unlikely that somebody like an entrepreneur would come in and open up a, uh, a swimming pool, let, you know, maybe a fitness center. You know, so the, the cost seems high. You know, and so, uh, and, and I think too that it's uh, it's kind of the question of, uh, of of seeds and getting and getting something going. And when when something gets going, here we've got this nice new swimming pool. I, I think it sends a, a real strong message that we built forward, but at the same time we maintain what we had. So to, so 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 to continue to to especially in a colder community where you know uh, having something to do other than. My kids play a lot of video games, which is great, but uh, it's, uh, as for outside, it's either, you know, uh, walking over to the swimming pool or throwing rocks at counselors' cars and stuff like that, so, okay. just joking, <laughs> not really. Okay, um, that's just uh, one more question. I guess from the reports, it looks like there's a good chance that the Leisure Center would definitely need a temporary closure, so what's the group's thought on a, uh, a, a closure for a temporary period? Well, I think a temporary closure would be, would be okay. Um, I, I believe I could speak for the group on that. Uh, we know that it does need renovations to be brought up to code, and I think those are important. I don't think that the five million, close to six million dollar price tag is prohibitive. Uh, obviously that'll make sure the Leisure Center lasts for many years to come and that's what we want. So we do understand that and, and it does sound like it makes a lot of financial sense to close it so that the multiplex can get established so that you can get the staff that you need and also so that you have the opportunity to do more fundraising if that's necessary. I wouldn't want it to close for a long time. I think it would be a loss if it closed for a long time. One other thing that I've heard that I haven't investigated thoroughly myself is that there could be a bit of damage to the aquatic center itself, to the pipes, if it were left sitting vacant for a long time without water in it. So that would be something I would want to investigate. Do you have any okay. further thoughts on that? That's great. No, thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, Christine and Mark, thank you for coming forward. It's really well done. Just a couple of questions for you, because we field, field, and field have done a study on this and about filling the pool in, mm -hmm. just making it badminton or courts. And uh, but there's a lot of work I think to be done if it stays open. If we just partially fix it and close it, open it up, they're talking about maybe a steel liner in the pool because they don't know how much maybe the rebar in the concrete pool has rusted, pillars are rusted. There's a lot of work. I think if there's a closing happening and eventually down the line if we have to do something, we should fix it right from the get go. Mm -hmm. Um, is your Facebook page back up? Because I tried to get on it and it was not up yet uh, last oh. week. Uh, no, it is. It has been running uh, for the past two months. I can talk to you about that afterwards if okay. you like or send you some information. Okay. And I'm looking forward to CDC tomorrow and how this is going to come by. Really, mm -hmm. uh, Councillor Rice, about going to the county. Mm -hmm. I believe it's around 25% of county residents use this pool, not considering yeah. one of the schools there. So I think it's important they become in as partners. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Councillor O'Toole. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, thank you very much for showing up tonight. It was awesome. Um, just a question. Would you be open to shorter hours if the Leisure Centre was to be open? So instead of running from 6 in the morning till 11 o'clock at night or something like that, maybe just run some condensed hours and still have the facility open? Just a, just a thought. Mm -hmm. Do you have any ideas on that? Um, I, I personally, you know, and, and this is my bias, but I, I would say that I, I would probably speak on behalf of many people when I say that uh, we sometimes wish it was open when it's not. Yeah. So, but I don't know if I'd be going the wrong way there, so I won't go that way. 
but, but no, I, I would prefer that it would stay open as much as it is. I, I do understand that as a solution. I think it would be important to keep it open so that it's flexible because uh, it is close to a lot of schools, so you would really want to encourage the kids to go there. Um, and also, obviously, it would need to be open after work and things like that. So as long as it were, you know, realistically following people's schedules, I think that would be okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, there's going to be some discussion here for a little bit yet mm -hmm. uh, with this meeting tomorrow, and uh, we're just starting uh, budgets coming up and stuff like that too. So uh, really appreciate your input, and thank you very much for showing up tonight. Thank you very much. Okay. Any further questions for the delegation? You know what, guys? It looks like there's none on my little board here. It looks like you're off the hot seat. Thanks very okay. much for coming and giving your presentation today. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a report uh, that was on the city's website on Friday, and it's the one that the council members are sort of referring to. So you can have a look at that tonight. It's the Community Development Committee meeting for uh, November 1st, so you can go home tonight and download that, read the report, and see what it says. Uh, and you're more than welcome to come and attend at that meeting and listen in on the discussion. Okay. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You for very your much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we're still in the delegation portion of our agenda, and this is, as I said, an opportunity for anybody from the community that would like to come forward to address council on any community-related matter. I'll ask another time if there's anybody that would like to come forward to address council on any community-related matter. And it looks like we don't have any takers, so we'll move on from the delegation portion of the agenda to public hearings, of which we have none, unfinished business, of which we have none, reports, of which we have none, and then into com committee business, which I believe we have some of that. Uh, Councillor Gustafson, I think you were the chair of Pursuit of Excellence Committee for October 13th. Is that right? Thank you. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. I move the council receive the minutes of the Pursuit of Excellence <coughs> Committee held October 13th, 2011. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Anyone note any errors or omissions from that set of minutes? <laughs> Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Gustafson, was there anything coming out of that sentiment or anything you wanted to highlight? Um, just there was a fair amount of debate this uh, this time. It's coming close to the end of the season as far as the funding, uh, the amount of dollars left in the funding. So, and there's quite a bit few applications that we were not able to uh, to fund. So there was you know lots of debate this time. So we were able to fund a few and. Uh, other than that, I wish uh, Council McLean all the best in your new upcoming chair position, and thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Uh, so we'll move on to the Special Public Works Committee meeting. Uh, Councillor Radburn, did you have a point on this? No? no? Oh, okay, sorry, Special uh, Special Public Works. Councillor Wong? Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move that Council receive the minutes of the Special Public Works Committee meeting held October 17th, 2011. And just to speak to this briefly, there was only one item on that agenda that was handled before uh, council last or a couple weeks ago, and that was for uh, expansion of the of the uh, 102nd Street job to include the uh, slope repair work, and that was given to Knelson Rock Products as they were doing the paving in that area. Great, thanks so much, Councillor Wong. Any discussion on that set of minutes? Seeing nothing, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, and there was no other business from that committee meeting, so we'll move on to Community Development Committee from October 18th. And I think that was Councillor Crogan. Thanks, Mayor Given. I move Council receive the minutes of the Community Development uh, Committee meeting uh, held October 18th, 2011. Thanks very much, Councillor Crogan. Anyone note any errors or omissions? Seeing nothing, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Crokin. Thanks, uh, Mayor Gibbon. Further, uh, I, I move Council approve entering into a funding agreement for FCSS with Human Services Ministry for the period January 1st to December 31st, uh, 2012. Just speak quickly to that. That's just formalizing the contract that we already have in place here. Mayor Gibbon. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Crokin. Uh, discussion or debate? Councillor Rice? So this is the contract that allows us to access 80-20 funds, is it? So the province puts in 80% for every 20% we put up? Yes, that's right, Mayor Gibbon. Okay. 
and also recognizes the new name of the ministry after the uh, shuffle when the new premier came in too. Mm. Okay. Any further discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you very much. And that motion carries. Councillor Crokin, I think you have one other item of business. Yes, thanks, Mayor Goodman. Uh, I also move council approve terminating the agreement between the city and 132618 Alberta Limited, effective October 31st, 2011, and further, that the committee directs administration to return to committee with recommendations for the allo allocation of the $100,000 grant amount. And just uh, quickly to that, that was uh, funds that were allocated for affordable housing and uh, the unit uh, that 132618 uh, Alberta Limited had uh, proposed a condo unit which were to sell for uh, like 50 percent dollars uh, with that hundred thousand dollars that just didn't fly so uh, they have uh, terminated the agreement with us so we have the hundred thousand dollars still in house okay thanks very much councillor grogan any discussion or debate on the motion seeing none then i'll call for the vote thank you and that motion carries. Councillor Crokin, was there anything else from that set of minutes that you wanted to highlight? No. No, sorry, um, you're given. No, there were just a couple items there, and that, that'll cover it. Okay, thanks very much. So that'd take us to the Arts Development Committee for October 19th, and Councillor Monroe, I think that was you. Thanks, uh, Mayor Given. I'll move that Council receive the minutes of the Arts Committee meeting held October 19th, 2011. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Any errors or omissions? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councilor Monroe, anything to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, just, uh, <coughs> there wasn't a lot on our agenda that day, but uh, we did uh, provide funding to a number of groups, uh, one being a local artist that is going to be uh, uh, putting together some postcards uh, for sale uh, and uh, the uh, 14th annual Maple Sugar Festival which will be coming up this February as well too we uh, provided some grant funding to that and uh, the GP singers for the Festival of Carols as well too those are just a couple of the of the ones that we did uh, but it looks like uh, the money will be well spent or well used I guess <laughs> thanks very much uh, Councillor Monroe Councillor Rice, did you have a question on this set of minutes? I, I just wanted to commend the committee. I, uh, as Alderman Radburn and I got involved, there was a visitor that was unable to find uh, the variety of postcards that was very disappointed in the variety of postcards that she was able. I worked with her for a couple days and did find some postcards, but uh, believe me, they were few and far between. The ones she was happiest with were ones that our communications director had bought when he first moved to Grand Prairie and gave me. So uh, this is an excellent initiative. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice and Councillor Monroe. Uh, so that'll take us to the Environment Committee, I think. And Councilor Monroe, that's you again, hey? Yes, uh, thanks again, Mayor Given. I'll move that uh, Council receive the minutes of the Environment uh, Committee meeting held October 24th, 2011. Thanks very much. Anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Councilor Wong? Thank you, Mayor Given. It shows that I was present for that meeting. I was at City Hall, but I wasn't able to make the Environment Committee meeting. Thanks very much for that catch, you Councillor Wong. Wandering around. So, so we'll uh, we'll cut, catch that in the minutes, uh, and so we'll have the vote on the minutes with that amendment. Any discussion or debate? And Councillor Radburn was in attendance. And Councillor O'Toole. Okay. Thanks very much. So we've got those uh, amendments. That set of minutes. See, I told you there's a reason why I ask that all the time. <laughs> okay, any uh, further discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote on the minutes as amended. Thank you. And that motion carries. Uh, Councillor Monroe, I think there's some business coming out of the meeting. 
Yes, uh, thanks again, Mayor Given. I'll move that council approve the continuation of the community garden in its current location for the next two years, being 2012-2013. And just to speak uh, briefly to that, uh, I believe that the community garden has been uh, quite a success this last year. Uh, we've had quite a bit of participation uh, with uh, approximately 45 to 50 volunteers uh, coming throughout the season. Um, if uh, all of the uh, items grown have been uh, donated back to uh, places such as the Salvation Army, Friendship Centre, uh, Odyssey House, uh, Rising Above, and the Grand Prairie Care Centre. Um, I understand that there is future plans for the area, but nothing coming up immediately. Uh, so two years does seem like a reasonable uh, extension of the garden and uh, as well when the time does come for it to be moved, if there is a necessity for it to move, uh, it shouldn't be that difficult to relocate it at that time. Okay. Thank you. Thanks very much, Council Monroe. Any questions for Council Monroe, discussion or debate? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. That motion carries. Council Monroe, anything else to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, sure, thanks, uh, Mayor. Given uh, we did have a delegation come, it was a gentleman from the Northwest Energy Lab uh, talking about um, uh, a wind Windronics system. Uh, it's a new initiative that uh, this company is bringing to Grand Prairie. As I understand it, they're doing a uh, uh, pilot project out at uh, Henry Ham's property and. Uh, uh, it looks like uh, quite a unique uh, uh, wind turbine system, and we'll be uh, looking forward from uh, or for some results uh, from this project. Excellent. Very cool. Thank you, Council Monroe. Uh, if there's nothing else, then we'll move on to the General Government Services Committee meeting, and I believe Councillor Radburn, you had that in seven minutes. Thank you, Madam Gotcha. Thank you. I move Council receive the minutes of the General Government Services Committee meeting held October 25th, 2011. Thanks very much, Councilor Reverend. Anyone note any errors or omissions in that set of minutes? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councilor Reverend. Thank you. Uh, I move Council approve the award of construction of three outdoor monopole telecommunication towers and five microwave <coughs> backhaul wireless network links to Alcatel Lucent Canada in the amount of $679,813, excluding GST. Providing a little background to this, um, admin recommended that rather than issuing a, a separate RFP, the city work with our existing vendor of the core wireless network infrastructure for a couple of reasons. One, cost, uh, the negotiated cost is, uh, is uh, far less than market value. Um, and plus it eliminates time delays and conflicts and finger pointing by having a single project management structure. Um, so uh, the funding is in place for this. Uh, it's part of the, I think it's an overall project of six million. This, I think, with this we'll have spent about half. And uh, I think this, now we will have the infrastructure and now the applications uh, are the next step to make this project uh, a go. Uh, I think that's intended to be spring of 2012. We hope to have the, uh, the project finished. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councilor Reverend. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Questions or comments? Councilor Wong? Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. I'm highly supportive of this motion, and I believe this is well under budget. Um, the, the funding from this came from Build Canada, uh, one-third from Build Canada, one-third from Build Canada, Alberta, and the city only has to put in a third to get this wireless network up there. So I think that's a good leveraging of our dollars, and, and uh, it allows us to uh, get into a technology where um, it's been very difficult for other communities. and. Um, I attended the wireless presentation. They've, they've done a fantastic job of mapping out the infrastructure and how it's going to work here, and they believe that they're going to overcome some of the difficulties other communities have seen. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Any further discussion or debate? <coughs> Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. <coughs> and that motion carries. Uh, Councillor Edmund? Thank you. Uh, I move Council approve the award of tender T49103-11 for a contract to provide mail delivery and courier services to Dragonfly Courier for three years commencing January 1st, 2012, with an option to extend for one year as the lowest cost tender. Um, there were three bids for this work. Uh, the low bid was 4400 $4, a month. 
The other two bids were 66 and 8820. Um, as it happens, the lowest bidder is our present provider of that service, and we've been pleased, uh, the city's been pleased with the service. Thanks very much, Thank Councillor Radburn. Any discussion or debate? Questions or comments on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. I think you got a couple more there, don't you, Councilor? Not, I not do. Yet, eh? <laughs> I do. I move Council give first reading to bylaw C 964D to amend the Subdivision and Development Appeal Board bylaw. Should I speak to it now? Uh, Please. Mayor Governor Please. Okay. So this is a, uh, just uh, an update of the appeal fee. It has been $100 for a, long, for a while. Uh, that, so this change would make it 150 which better reflects and recognizes current advertising costs, which is a cost we must incur when there are appeals. And uh, uh, the other update is that public members per diems uh, are, have now been changed to reflect council's rates. Uh, a full day, $200, uh, and I think a minimum of four hours. So just those are the two uh, uh, quick updates to this bylaw. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Reverend. So a motion for first reading. Uh, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Reverend. So I would uh, continue by move council and uh, give second reading to bylaw C-964D to amend the subdivision development appeal by board bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Reverend. Any discussion or debate on second reading? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. One more, Council. Thank you. Somebody's vote didn't stick. Thanks very much. And that carries. Second reading carries, Councilor. Thank you. I move that uh, we have third reading of bylaw C 964D. Okay, so a motion to have third reading here uh, in Council Chambers tonight. And this motion, of course, must be unanimous. Uh, any discussion or debate on the motion to have third reading? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries unanimously, so we can have third reading. Thank you. I move council give third reading to bylaw C 964D to amend the subdivision development appeal board bylaw. Thanks very much, Councillor Reverend. So, third and final reading of the bylaw. Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. And thank you. That motion carries. Councillor Reverend. Thank you. Uh, finally, I move council rescind the following uh, policies. 3215 six foot setback, 4220 vandalism, 5215 use of utility lots for access to private property, 6310 county water rates, and 7120 tax recovery act delegation of authority. In speaking to this, this motion, I'll quickly provide uh, you the rationale uh, given to committee with respect to uh, rescinding these policies. The first one is uh, obsolete. Uh, it was in place 30 years ago to guide acquisition of property during upgrading of sidewalks. Uh, so uh, times have changed. We don't need this. 4220, vandalism. It's now standard operating procedure that we uh, pursue uh, uh, consequences to those who vandalize. 5215, use of utility lots for access to private property. It's, this is outdated. Uh, this designated a week in the spring and a week in the fall where citizens... Uh, could use utility lots to access their property to remove RVs or whatever. Currently, a public use of land, uh, there's a vehicle access permit authorized through the community service director to handle that. 6310, uh, county water rates is obsolete because uh, Equiterra now is the provider and, and uh, so they set the rates. And 7120, Tax Recovery Act Delegation of Authority. It's now covered in the municipal government Government Act and uh, uh, the, it gives the authority to the city manager or designate. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Redburn. Any discussion or debate on that set of uh, policies uh, to be rescinded? Councillor McLean. Uh, thank you, Mayor Given. I just had a couple questions for Councillor Radburn. Uh, on policy 3215, in exchange for the title for the six feet, uh, that would be just for where we'd be responsible for the sidewalk but not the sewer system? And the water system because if we're going to take title are we going to be responsible another six feet for that we're rescinding this so this will be mute right so the, okay. this policy won't be in effect and but we are taking title that six feet so will we be responsible for any sewer or water lines underneath yeah up to the property line i'm assuming yeah uh, right well, uh, uh, uh I'd I'd like to know that. sure just for clarity this is a policy from 1978 mm -hmm. uh, that hasn't been used in years 
and was originally for when the city actually built the uh, sidewalks that are there today. Uh, so the city, when buildings were coming down, would be taking that six-foot setback. Uh, so this hasn't been used. There hasn't been any situation where this has been used in, I'm kind of looking at a few of the folks around administration, but in, in years and years and years and years. So it'll have nothing to do with sewer and water lines. That's right. Okay. That's right. All right. Um, policy number 5215, I was glad uh, Council Rabbit said about vehicle access permit. Yes. We just had an RV issue, and uh, a lot of people maybe did not know about this, so hopefully where to go get this vehicle access permit. And is there anything... Uh, they canceled it. What's that? Sorry, Councilor. Sorry. So go, go ahead, Councilor. Oh, no, I ask your to... question. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so now they can go with a vehicle access permit. Uh, where would they go for that? Because this is a big issue for motor homes and trailers. And uh, as well, is there something in the works about maybe parking behind and the city is looking at something down the road of maybe parking back there and uh, paying a fee? Okay, so on the first part of the question, um, they would go to uh, the, through the community services director. So that's the contact point. Uh, and there is a, there's a current public use of land bylaw that allows vehicle access permit to be authorized by the community service director. So that's, uh, that's the point of contact there. Uh, relative to Kevin's uh, second question, actually that was the one item that didn't end up in a motion. Uh, so in the next year, we're doing both a, a review of policy. There are five bylaws that refer to this uh, public utility lot business. And there's a cross-functional team or an interdepartmental team that's being established to look at uh, use of public utility lots. And yes, that will happen over the next number of months. Correct. Okay. Any further discussion or debate or questions? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. Thank you. And that motion carries. Councillor Abram, was there anything else to highlight from that set of minutes? That's it. Thank you. That was it. And if that was it, that's it. <laughs> If that, if that was it, that's it for tonight. We'd uh, take us out of our committee business and into correspondence, of which we have none. Uh, delegation business. We could maybe have a motion to receive the delegation's presentation and maybe perhaps forward their printed uh, presentation to the Community Development Committee meeting tomorrow just so that it makes it there for uh, presentation. Uh, Councillor Rice? I move that we receive the presentation by Chris Jana um and Mark Story for uh, information and further that we forward uh, their written presentation to tomorrow's Community Development Committee. Sure, we'll save them for having to make it and they can ensure that it was on the agenda along with the other piece. Okay. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. Thank you. Uh, that motion carries. Uh, we had no notices of motion and that brings us to council member reports and Councillor Gustafson, I believe you had the downtown association. Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. I attended my uh, my first downtown association meeting, and now I know what they do down there, and it's it's a very well valued organization. I'm meeting? glad we have it. Yeah, in one meeting. One, one meeting. Yes. Uh, downtown lately, the children's Halloween walking parade was a huge success, with uh, over 400 children attending. Uh, special thanks thanks to the staff at the Crystal Center, Chris and the Enforcement Services staff, and of course the RCMP. Upcoming events include Vegas Night downtown. Uh, November 18th, stores are really open until 11 o'clock. Transit will be extended that evening to get you home safely. And of course, the Stuff the Bus promotion will take place in front of Bama Furniture, where your own uh, Mayor Bill Given will be there uh, challenging, challenging people for something. I'm not sure what he's challenging exactly yet, but uh, you'll be able to win a special limited edition T-shirt. And of course, the Santa Claus Parade is December 4th, beginning at 1. So. Ho, ho, ho. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Uh, and just a note on that, uh, we'll be cutting the cards and people can win that special edition uh, T-shirt, Grand Prairie T-shirt. Um, and so uh, encourage people to come downtown and uh, join all the festivities of uh, Vegas night. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Councillor Radburn, I believe you had airport commission. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, just uh, had an airport commission meeting October 24th. Um, Councillor O'Toole will be chairing uh, the uh, commission committee as we move forward. Um, uh, this meeting was all about 2012 operational and capital budgets. Uh, we've approved a $5.6 million in revenue and $5.2 million in expenditure in the operational side. So we'll have a little bit of a 
uh, flexibility there. And on the capital side, uh, it's a $5.4 million uh, budget. Uh, the two major projects are the expansion of the um, parking from uh, about uh, 550 to 700 and some uh, parking stalls and, uh, and design uh, and uh, engineering and design work for both the uh, runway rehab and the runway expansion. Um, so getting that in place in 2012 and then looking at expanding the runway in 2013-2014. Uh, we'll take a look at that uh, uh, within the next, uh, during the next year. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Councillor Radburn. Uh, and library board, Councillor O'Toole. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. Yes, I attended the library uh, meeting here just the other day and uh, some of the reports that I've got, we had a freeze mob at the Prairie Mall uh, last on the 22nd. It was a, a great success. Um, I think we had about 60 people show up and uh, lasted about five minutes. We got a lot of strange looks, but uh, um, it was very successful. Uh, it was one of the last meetings that uh, Laurie Harrison was attending, and uh, it was her last official meeting and uh, we gave her a uh, going away present as part of the library board. And also um, there was a uh, couple debates and discussions on uh, some of the programs that we were going to be offering at uh, the, the, the uh, library. So I'll have more and interesting news as, as it comes forward. Ooh, exciting. Thanks very much, oh, Councillor yeah. O'Toole. Uh, and Councillor Tool, I think you also had South Beach Regional Archives. Yes, uh, the archives, we had that meeting on the 21st, Friday at noon. And uh, basically it was uh, an executive meeting. And uh, some of the topics that come up were uh, the First Nations uh, people. There's uh, a lot of history in this area. And we don't seem to have a lot of the documentation as we would like to have at the archives. So the word's out that uh, we are looking for uh, information about families and stuff like that. We don't want to take it away from them, but at least have something in place that we can have it as a uh, security type thing. Also, uh, the other event that we had on the 1st of uh, October was the uh, film and story night, and that was an overwhelming success. And uh, we had a couple discussions about next year's event and uh, we'll probably have it during the day uh, as people are getting older uh, eight nine ten o'clock at night uh, they want to go to sleep and uh, we won't say anybody fell asleep at the stories and the film but uh, we're gonna maybe uh, revamp it so it's an afternoon event next year <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> thanks very much Councillor O'Toole uh, if there were no further uh, agencies boards and commission reports uh, Councillor Gustafson did you have a further one Sure, please. Prairie Gallery Building Committee. Thanks, Mayor Given. October 20th, we had a, a Prairie Gallery Building uh, Committee up, update, uh, construction schedule and status of our budget. Well, I've got good news and bad news. The, uh, the good news is we're on budget within our contingency. The bad news is we're a little over schedule. Uh, we've had to add uh, 69 days so far to the uh, scheduling, to the completion of the Prairie Gallery, the old Prairie Gallery Building. Uh, we spent $4 million up to date on the uh, $9.9 .9 million projects. There has been over 80 changeovers in that building, and only, only adding up to about $600,000 in our budget difference, but we're still on budget. There's been lots of surprises, of course, opening up a building that old. Uh, all the steel is uh, up, and we're lo looking to do the bricks, but we're 100, about 100 bricks short, so... Anybody out there has some old bricks? <laughs> that match exactly. Don't look at us. We're all a brick short. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, bricks. Yeah, we need some. Need need a load of old bricks. If anybody knows where to find any behind their old shed or something to to finish that building off. So we're looking for approximately to be open up around February first, and we're scheduling a tour so we can all go have a tour of the construction up to date so far. Thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Uh, any further council member reports? Seeing none, then we'll move to roundtable and we'll start with Councillor Crokin. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. On October the 19th, I had a meeting with uh, City Manager Greg 
And uh, it's, a, it's a nice time to get together with the city manager and find out that he does do a lot of things behind the scene, which uh, is nice to be able to compliment him on. Good job. Anyway, on October the 20th, uh, I, along with uh, hundreds of other people, were at the chamber mixer at the multiplex, and that was uh, a real eye-opener for, well, my wife, for one, she couldn't believe how nice it is in there. And we didn't go around to see everything, but. On October the 21st, uh, I was part of the uh, 211 presentation in uh, the north room here. And that's, uh, I hope the province goes ahead with that. That uh, does open a lot of uh, opportunities, and there's lots of calls going to 911 that would be better off served by the 211. Uh, on Saturday the 22nd, I did attend the Peace Library Executive Meeting in, in uh, Fairview. On October 26th, I attended the Hope International Fundraiser uh, in the evening at uh, Quality Inn. October 28th, I attended the uh, Ovations Theatre Performing Arts uh, Guild opening night, the VIP gala, which was uh, very nice in the uh, former St. Joe's Church. And today was uh, a very gassy thing. It was uh, at the chili uh, cook-off at the uh, south side <laughs> fire hall it was a fundraiser it was good things at the fire hall boy that chili was fairly hot <laughs> and uh, and that was it Mayor okay thanks very much councillor crokin councillor gustafson thank you mayor given as uh, as deputy mayor i was able to attend the chamber comment chamber Chamber of Commerce Business Excellence Awards and on behalf of Mayor Given I was able to accept the award on behalf of the city for quarter century member 25 years in, in recognition of 25 years of support and commitment to improving the economy of our community and region so I was very proud and honored to and to accept that that on behalf of council and um, there was all there was I'd like to just mention the nominees because it, we finish off the small business week with these awards and and there's so many small businesses in and around Grand Prairie, something we really need to recognize. So, uh, best new business nominees were Bombshell and Ransom, Go Social, and OMG Cupcakes. Young Entrepreneur of the Year was uh, Chris Balderson, nominated. Danielle Cherwick, Stephanie Cooney, and Brenda Magnuson uh, were also nominated. Employee of the Year was Dwayne Head, Maureen Bailey, and Melissa Makarenko. Employee of Choice was Barstow Leaners Ketchum Engineering, Tony Roma's Vintage Wine and Spirits. Business of the Year was Friesen Bain Chartered Accountant, Lavalley Physical Therapy at the Rabbit Hole Bookstore. And Business of the Year with 10 employees and more nominations were Krauss's Cleaners, Grand Prairie and District Association of Persons with Development Disabilities, and Stojan's Power Sports and Marine. Uh, small business makes up, I don't know what the percentage it is, but it's a lot of businesses and a lot of work and a lot of workers and staff and it creates such a business vibe around the city that uh, we're really I'm really excited that we have the Chamber of Commerce, Commerce representing us and, and supporting all the small business in the Grand Prix. So anyways this is for uh, for Mayor Gibbon and I also was uh, <clears throat> in the last uh, two weeks here I was able to meet with our city manager Greg Sherback with our regular meetings with the council members and I also attended the Grand Prairie Regional College President's Ball here in Grand Prairie and that was a, that was a ball and a lot of fun. And that's all, thank you Mary Given. Okay, thanks very much Councillor Gustafson and uh, we'll proudly display this uh, quarter century member from the Chamber of Commerce in City Hall. Uh, certainly it's uh, been a long time that the Grand Prairie City Council has been supportive of the Chamber of Commerce and I think that relationship's borne a lot of fruit over the years. And so certainly we'll display that proudly. Thanks very much for being there to accept it on our behalf. <coughs> Councillor Redburn. Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, very quickly, uh, October 19th also I met with the City Manager. Uh, October 20th, third fire hall tour. Uh, Grand Spirit Foundation open house for Brian Hillaby. Chamber mixture at the multiplex and the gallery building committee. Uh, 21st, I enjoyed, Councillor, I enjoyed, I joined and enjoyed Councillors O'Toole and Crokin at the Call 211 initiative presentation. Uh, Don and I attended the Grand Prairie Regional College President's Ball, um, and I attended uh, the Ovations Opening Gala, gala event and the Chile United Way uh, luncheon today. 
Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Eber and Councillor O'Toole. Thank you much, Mayor Given. On the 18th and 19th, I was not in town. I uh, took my father to Edmonton for medical reasons. It's thumbs up, though. It's good. On the uh, 20th, I toured the new fire hall with a number of uh, councillors here. Uh, later on that day, we went to the multiplex with the chamber mixer, uh, small business week, as presently uh, mentioned. And uh, later that night, I went to the Grand Prairie College Theatre and watched uh, Miss Saigon with my wife. On the 21st, I also attended the uh, 211 presentation with Donna Mori. Um, I also went at a noon hour meeting with the South Peace Regional Archives Society, which I explained earlier in the day. Uh, at 2 o'clock in the afternoon, I attended the tender opening uh, at City Hall here. And later on that night, I attended the uh, annual Sea Fest at the Grand Prairie Elks Lodge. It was a major fundraiser and uh, it was uh, quite a success. 22nd Saturday, I went to the Prairie Mall to the Freeze Mob. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, also later that day, I, uh, I'm a part of the Ham Radio Club in town and we had an education, uh, uh, kind of a teaching seminar for tactical suits and rescue. So while they were doing their GPS locations, we were also doing our ham radio work so we can keep in touch with the uh, RCMP and, uh, and uh, other areas where ham radio was required and uh, it's been used quite a bit in the Grand Prairie area over the years. Um, later that night I attended the Volunteer Services Bureau Steak Night Fundraiser and I did my obligation as a city councillor to bid on a lot of silent auction items. Uh, the 20th, or 28th, uh, the Friday, I uh, just want to kind of speak here a little bit about the events that happened last week uh, with the uh, Warrior uh, uh, football players. Uh, I know there are a number of uh, city uh, businesses and, and area businesses were involved in uh, supporting this uh, tragedy, uh, of tragic event in f monetary funds and, uh, and services. But uh, I was at uh, Playfair uh, T-shirt factory here in town. They do advertising and promotions. And Don Pike and his entire family uh, were up pretty much all night and all day for that entire week making t-shirts. And I can honestly tell you that these t-shirts are all over Alberta and Western Canada right now. I think they've sold over 3,000 and the money is going directly into the funds. Uh, no profits here at all, absolutely none. Plus they shut down their business to uh, make this happen. So I'd like to just uh, thank them publicly and I'm wearing one of the shirts. Uh, on the 23rd, I attended the Halloween parade downtown with my grandson. He was the little uh, Elmo character that uh, looked kind of like Elmo, which is a good thing. And today I attended the United Way Chili Lunch at the South uh, Fire Hall, and uh, that's my report for this. Thanks very much, Councilor O'Toole. Councilor O'Toole, don't turn off your microphone. I think you may have a question. Councilor Gustafson? Councilor. Councillor O'Toole, I, I, I have to ask, but uh, what, what's a freeze mob? Well, next year, you can be my friend and we'll take you to a freeze mob. <laughs> we basically went to the mall. We were walking around like average Joe people. We had a freeze for five minutes. We stopped and read a book. There were 60 people in the food court and everybody was kind of looking at why is everybody reading? And then we unbuttoned our shirts and or our jackets. Oh. Never mind. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll continue. I unbuttoned our jackets and we have iGeek reading or whatever our library shirts were. So everybody at the end of the freeze mob understood that it was a library project. Cool. Thank you, Councillor Tool. <laughs> Thanks very much, Councillor Gustafson. Councillor Monroe, did you have a question as well? Yes, uh, thanks, Mayor Given. Uh, Councillor O'Toole, was this uh, the big surprise that you couldn't tell us about uh, a week or so ago at committee meeting? Yes, it was. Okay. Yes, it was. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Uh, Councillor McLean. Thank you, Mayor Given. On October 20th, I was, I was 
part of the tour of the third fire hall and how far along they are in construction. Uh, quite a few good things here as the previous two that were built in early 2000 never had a fire pole in them for a fire station. And this was built and where their quarters are above there's a fire and down they go and it's pretty sentimental to firemen and actually anybody that thinks about it there should be a fire pole. As well, uh, what I noticed there as a carpenter, uh, previous two fire buildings were not done properly in uh, where they parked their vehicles and they're breaking up in concrete and it's going to cost the city money here down the road. This one will be, it's structurally designed, a uh, uh, wall built on pilings and then the concrete and two layers of rebar. So job well done and uh, hats off to them. As well, I went to Chamber Mixture at Multiplex with my wife Tina and I believe at the time there was just under 200 memberships sold and I believe there's over 800 or so now since the, the price has gone down so it is working. October 22nd I also attended the President's Ball Viva Italy in, uh, with my wife Tina. I don't know how much they raised but they must have done really good on one of the auctions of the 10 units I think it was over 30 some thousand on that one area so hats off it was really good and the ladies were dressed to kill that night they were really well dressed. and. Uh, October 26th, I also attended with uh, Councillor Crokin and Councillor Wong, Hope International Development Agency. It was their 36th anniversary uh, festival film premiere and dinner, uh, representing Haiti this time. And they also had their David S. McKenzie there, he's the Executive Director of Hope International. And one thing that's really good about Hope is if you look at their graphic where their money goes, only 2% goes to administration and there ain't too many that are like that. Over 80 some percent goes directly to where overseas or where it has to be. So I think it was really good and well done. Uh, and it was a full house. It had to be 250, 300 people. It was amazing. Over 360. Uh, October 29th, uh, I wasn't at the downtown association and prayed for the kids, but my wife and kids were. And I went hats off to Helen Rice and the downtown association because they came home, they had smiles ear to ear and big, big bags of candy <laughs> and uh, really good on downtown association. On October 31st, uh, I'm just saying this because I, the first time I took my kids to preschool and uh, had to dress them up and I was amazed how many kids were dressed at St. Gerard School anyways and all the kids were really involved and I was pretty proud today. Thanks, Thanks very much, Councilor McLean. Councilor Wong. Thank you, Mayor Given. On October 19th, I was at the Wireless Initiative Open House at Muskstee Park. October 20th, the Chamber Business Showcase at the Multiplex. The 21st, at the Chamber Business Excellence Awards. On October 22nd, the Grand Prairie Regional College President's Ball. Uh, on the 24th, uh, I was at the Center 2000 Board Meeting. Uh, October 25th, uh, I was present for a presentation from the Wapiti Corridor Planning Society um, as we met with the motorized off-highway vehicle users. On October 26th, it was already mentioned, the Hope International and DAVT Society fundraiser for Haiti. On October 27th, I was present with other members of council I saw there as well as the mayor at uh, Bill Bowes' funeral. Just wanted to say that uh, there was a man who made some major contributions to the community and um, definitely f at, during his time uh, in Grand Prairie, uh, there, was, um, there was major influences in the shaping of Grand Prairie and I, I know he's gonna be missed. Uh, October 28th, I was at the memorial service for the comp warriors where the uh, mayor passed along condolences on behalf of the city of Grand Prairie. And finally, on October 31st, I was at the United Way Chili Luncheon at the South Fire Hall. Thanks very much, Councillor Wong. Councillor Rice? I had my meeting as well with City Manager Shervak. Uh, I think a, an excellent initiative on his part to sit down individually with each member of Council twice a year to make sure that staff is, is going in the direction Council would like them to. I attended the Small Business Awards Banquet, uh, was been mentioned by Councillor Gustafson with Chris Lavoisier as the guest speaker from Yardstick. Uh, excellent speaker, very entertaining and motivational as well. 
I attended an Albert Urban Municipalities Association board meeting and a local authorities pension plan stakeholder consultation. These are held twice a year um, to get a sense of um, the members, uh, again, what their feedback. I attended also the funeral uh, for Bill Bowes, as Councillor Wong has mentioned. You know, this was type of person that built this community and had a huge impact on it right from getting the railroad here to the newspaper to uh, things that certainly define our quality of life even today. And today I attended the chili lunch at the fire hall and um, very impressive with the fire department and the staff from cultural and heritage and community services uh, that do a great job in that terms of volunteer um, and, uh, of course, uh, the mayor's own assistant, Bernie Benson, right in the thick of it, volunteering as usual. So a big thanks to all of them. Thanks very much, Councillor Rice. Councillor Monroe. Thanks, Mayor Given. Um, uh, as, like many others, I uh, also met with our city manager, Greg Sherbach. Uh, I thought it was a very productive meeting. Uh, did the fire hall tour. Uh, was also at the uh, chamber mixer. Uh, it was uh, quite impressive to see that many people there. I don't. I'm not sure how many people were there, but it, the place was was pretty full. So uh, hats off to the chamber for another successful small business week. 482. Okay. Uh, went to the GPRC President's Ball. Uh, once again, a very nice, uh, nice event. It's always great to, to go to that event and uh, uh, see everyone get dressed up and all the funds that they do raise for the uh, college. Uh, also met with uh, Elaine Garrow and uh, Leticia Dempster, who is the uh, Leticia is the new project officer for Preda. So she is uh, uh, starting to uh, get settled into her job and look forward to more things to come uh, about with Preda. Thank you. Thanks very much, Councillor Monroe. Um, I attended a number of the events that had already been mentioned by other council members, but I'm just going to take a second to, to focus on two uh, that had both been mentioned. I also attended the uh, funeral for William Bill Bowes, and uh, it was an honour to be able to be there um, and represent the city, um, but also just an honour to really to be in attendance to somebody who has already been mentioned, uh, contributed so much to our community. Um, the second event that I wanted to mention was the community memorial service that was held this Sunday at the Crystal Centre. Um, and uh, the contrast between the two uh, events, both very sad and, and uh, very uh, tragic for our community, um, but the contrast between the two was striking in that uh, we had somebody, I think, whose legacy was certainly uh, assured in the community for their contributions that they made. And we had uh, four young men who won't have an opportunity to leave their mark on the community. Uh, or so you might think. I think really um, through the course of this tragedy, those four young men have left their mark on the community and I think they will continue to for years. Um, I wanted to say uh, a few notes of thanks uh, and congratulations, if that's the right word in this sort of situation. First, to the folks in our emergency services uh, who go out and do their jobs in terrible situations like this and often don't get recognized. Uh, we certainly appreciate the work that they do for our community all the time. Uh, I'd like to recognize the Grand Prairie Public School District uh, who have obviously been dealing with challenging time for the students at the schools as well as the staff um, and the entire community. I think they've had a lot of grace in uh, very difficult circumstances. I'd like to uh, recognize uh, Coach and Principal Rick Gilson who I think has been the epitome of dignity and grace in a very difficult situation. And I'd like to recognize the families who have shown more courage and compassion uh, I think, than could ever be expected. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, those people from across the country, the other mayors from across Alberta. Um, the mayor of McGrath called personally. Uh, their community is struggling with their own tragedy. And I think the fact that he was uh, willing to do that and say that his thoughts and prayers from his community were with our community uh, spoke a lot. I think ultimately the legacy of these young men will be that they brought our community closer together. And I think that that's a legacy that anybody could be proud of. Thanks very much. That's the end of our council meeting.